and uh, we are ready for the third oral presentation of this of this session on failure mechanisms and the speaker is here so with no further ado I'll give it to you, give the, the word to you and here we have the, the title as well so good thanks so good morning everyone I am Torquato Carulli. I am now a postdoctoral fellow here at the University of Girona, but this work was carried out when I was at Imperial College London, and uh, it's actually still uh, ongoing there. So this is about failure mechanisms under longitudinal compression of uh, carbon boron fiber hybrids, and the presentation is, is organized in four different sections, so I will just start with the background and the motivation. So first of all, why study compression? Well, for one thing, because longitudinal compressive strength is a weakness of carbon fiber composites. And here you have uh, a plot from a recent review paper where the compressive strength is compared to the, longitudin to the tensile strength. And we are talking about longitudinal properties, of course. And as you can see, uh, the strength for all unidirectional carbon fiber composites under compression is always lower than the tensile one, and in some cases it can be much lower. So the reason for that is the way these materials fail under compression, which is by formation of kink bands, which is an instability mechanism. And despite the fact that this mechanism is quite well understood, uh, and you may be well familiar with this, um, it's still a challenge to devise solutions in order to mitigate it and thus improve the compressive strength of carbon fiber composites. So one thing you may not be familiar with, however, is boron fiber. So a boron fiber is uh, what you can see in these pictures. It has an inner core, which is a tungsten borid core, and an outer layer, which is uh, this, okay, this ear, which is amorphous boron. Now, this fiber is around uh, 100 micron in diameter, so it's very large compared to, for example, carbon fiber. And the reason for this is that the inner core is extremely heavy, so you need to have a thick layer of boron to compensate for that and have an average density which is reasonable. Now, since this fiber is produced through chemical vapor deposition, it takes a long time to produce it and this makes it expensive. So why are, still, are we still interested in using it? Well, first of all, because uh, boron uh, composites have unmatched compressive performances, so their compressive strength under longitudinal compression uh, is quoted at 2900 megapascal, which is way higher than what you can get from any carbon fiber composite. And there is recent evidence that uh, even the boron itself, the material composing the fiber, has exceptional properties under compression especially if you compare it to, to carbon. But still, there is a lack of studies on uh, understanding the compressive failure mechanisms of these materials. Also, we see hybridization as an opportunity to improve the performances of carbon fiber composites and have something which is less expensive than boron composites themselves. So, now there are already commercially available carbon boron fiber hybrids, but again, there is a total lack of studies on the way these materials fail under compression. So this is the reason why we were interested in studying uh, these materials. So moving to what we actually did, we used this material here, which is, as I said, the commercially available uh, boron carbon hybrid where you have boron fiber. Again, this is uh, around 100 micron diameter. Then you have T1100G, which is an intermediate modulus carbon fiber. And this has epoxy as its uh, resin material. We also use the M7552 and I will explain in a minute why. 
So here you have two micrographs of the eyeborne material, so a longitudinal section, this one, where you can see the boron fibers, which are these thick white lines. And below here you have uh, a transverse cross-section, again, a single boron fiber and carbon fiber all around. So with this material, we produced this plate uh, where we basically have one single zero degree fiber or zero degree ply of the hybrid boron carbon material in the half laminate and the rest is all 90 degree IM78552 plies. Now the reason for this is that we wanted failure to occur in the zero degree ply first. We wanted to have a low failure load so just one ply of the hybrid is enough and we wanted the possibility to test this material uh, in two conditions. So the first one would be embedded, as you can see it in this stacking sequence, but also exposed by just polishing this one layer away. And that will allow us to look directly at the material while we test it. So we used uh, a micro-testing device, and our specimen were small scale, so they were 10 by 10 millimeter in plane. Uh, and we also used optical microscopy and uh, in situ SCM testing in order to perform different kind of observations during our tests. So we performed tests with uh, 90 degree ply removed inside the SCM with different notch geometries. We performed tests with the 90 degree ply on and also mixed tests where we performed an initial phase with the 90 degree ply on to initiate damage in the most natural way possible and then we polished the specimen, look at the damage and continued the test inside the SCM. So I will focus just on this one test because it will give me the opportunity to talk about the consistent aspects that we saw and also some specific feature to this one that we think can be of interest uh, for discussion. So moving to the results. As I said, for this test, we had an initial phase where we loaded and then unloaded the specimen with the 90 degree ply on, and we loaded it till three kilonewton. And when we unloaded and we analyzed um, the recording through digital image correlation, we saw that we had some residual strain close to the notch. So we expected to have some damage inside the specimen. We polished it, we looked at this region, and this is what we found. Now, here we have an initial shear compressive failure, then turning into a kink band. And uh, this has been observed already in the literature, but we found this interesting because in this case we have a blunt notch, while usually this is seen in the presence of very sharp notch. So we thought it was worth uh, mentioning it here. We then continued our test inside the SCM with the polished specimen, and we were looking at the progression of damage, so nothing happened uh, until we reached 3 kN, and this is where the kink band propagated, so we have our initial damage that was already there, and then the propagation. And it's interesting to note that the kink band propagated and reached the first boron fiber, and it seemed to stop there. So when we went on with our test, we saw increasing load and the kink band did not propagate it anymore, indeed. Uh, and we then had a load drop, so we stopped again the test and we checked what was happening. What we could see is that we had a number of kink bands occurring all over the place. Um, but what's interesting here is that they are all disjoint from each other. They are away from the notch. So it seems that after the first one, uh, basically the notch was kind of blunted, isolated, and each single strip of carbon material was behaving as a single object, let's say. And uh, the boron fiber, which I have highlighted here, were basically isolating all these different kink bands. And we also observed some crushing at the specimen ends. So there is something happening here, and we wanted to understand what it is. So we looked closer at the damage, and what we saw is that basically you have this kinking material 
After that, you have the intact boron fiber, and separating them, there is a split. There is a longitudinal split. So it seems that there is a crack deflection mechanism going on uh, here. And this is actually similar to what is observed in many biological materials, such as bone, where the role uh, played here by the boron fiber is played by osteons, which are um, cylindrical, stiff structures similar to the boron fiber, actually. And this is was consistent uh, pretty much everywhere, be the king band in play, be it out of plane, and it was consistent throughout all our tests. It was even more interesting to see that after this, when we loaded the specimen again, uh, the material tolerated the presence of all these kink bands and the load uh, could increase further until we had a uh, final failure, but this was probably related to crushing at the end of the specimen and then the specimen broke and uh, everything fell apart. So, to conclude, we have seen that boron fiber in the carbon-boron hybrid arrested the propagation of kink bands and actually promoted the flexion into longitudinal split, which is a mechanism that we have seen uh, that is reported for biomaterial and is known to improve fracture properties of the material. Uh, after this process, the boron fiber remained intact and the hybrid was able to tolerate uh, this damage and to be loaded to a further level. So future studies should investigate models to describe this behavior and the effect of geometrical and material variables on these mechanisms that we have seen. Also, larger test cases should be considered, so starting from coupon level, and it maybe it would be interesting to investigate other approaches to reproduce these same mechanisms, maybe with something cheaper uh, than boron. So let me acknowledge the funding from EPSRC uh, for this research and all the colleagues in the NEXTCOM project and also the European Commission for partly funding my presence here at Comtest. If you have any questions, I will be happy to take them. Thank you very much for, for a very nice presentation. We have a couple of questions. Jentel. Hi, Terquata. Nice presentation. I have a question that might explain what you are observing, but uh, I want to show it on the micrograph that you show initially when you're introducing the material. Um, can you show that micrograph again? It's going to take a while. <laughs> <laughs> Too many animations. Yes, so here on this yeah. one, on the bottom right, I have the impression that there is already a massive debond around the boron fiber, and you also tend to see it in the fiber in the image at the top. Doesn't it then make sense that your crack just all the deflects each time it reaches a boron fiber, or am I misinterpreting this? So actually, it's just uh, resin. It's not uh, debonding there. It's just the epoxy. But why is it so much darker then? So there. there could be something, yeah. So one thing when you polish this material is that boron is a very hard material, so it's very difficult to polish. So polishing is never perfect, but uh, what you see around the fiber should be just epoxy, not any prior debonding. Okay, it might be say. polishing damage. I think it would be yeah. worthwhile to check the interfacial strength, because if okay. this happens, it's probably also an indication that interfacial strength is low, which could it again explain low. what you observe. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Question down there? Um, uh, hi, Torquato. Thank you very much. Very nice. Very, very interesting results. Um, I, I was curious about the manufacturing process. How did you uh, manage to include those boron fibers in between that are more or less spa evenly spaced somehow. Uh, I was curious about that. How did you do yeah, that? Yeah, so actually this is not something that we did. This is a commercial material. So the way they did is they take a carbon prepreg and then they push the boron fiber inside the prepreg. So there is just one company in the world that produce boron fiber and uh, they are the specialists, let's say. Um, but yes, in this case, 
uh, you are correct, the spacing was not even. Um, there are different, so this material is produced with different densities of boron. This is the lowest one. Uh, when you go to higher densities, it gets better in terms of uh, uniform spacing. Uh, but for this one, yes, they still do not have the precise control to put them. So, so the, ma the, pro the manufacturer already provided the hybrid? Or? Yes. Okay. okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Time for one last question there. Thank you for the interesting presentation. Can you also comment on the tensile behavior of this composite, whether the presence of boron fibers degrade the tensile properties or enhance or doesn't have influence? So it depends on the carbon fiber, uh, but yes, that's a good question because uh, boron fiber does not behave as well in tension as it does in compression. So if you have a very good carbon fiber, then hybridization with boron would degrade a little bit the tensile uh, strength at least. Uh, if you have a not so good carbon fiber, then it may not. That's, uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much.